This is the seventh video in a short series that I want to challenge people to use daily. Do number one, two, three, just go through them, one of them each day. They're very brief, they're five to seven minutes long, they're about, and all they are is an intro to a thought, and then you take it and you pray. After the video's over, after the sound bite's over, then you begin to pray about the subject. Very briefly, we were standing in the gap, and we're looking for people to stand in that gap with us. But the overall concept is Daniel 6.3, where we do things with excellence. The last in the, seven, uh, the, the seventh one in the, in the series is simply this. God really challenged me over the last two years about the day and age that we live in. There are some things that are very valuable to God that are not valuable to people anymore. People bash the church all the time, but the church is very valuable to God. And let me just give you a quick story in the Bible. And I want to show you five things that God counts value, but in the day and age that you and I live, doesn't seem to be very valuable. I'm just going to kind of hit the spots and run with it. The Bible tells us that in Acts chapter 10, you need to read this whole chapter. Acts chapter 10, there's a guy named Cornelius. Here's what the Bible says about him, that he was a, a centurion in the Italian band. Verse 2, he's a devout man and one that feared God with his, all his house and which gave alms to the people. But listen to this, and he prayed always. He prayed always. Here's what I want you to see, these five things from this story. Number one, prayer has lost its value in America. The average pastor only prays a few minutes a day. Even the average Christian, there are Christian people who call themselves Christian that they don't even speak to God all day long. And so I believe one of the things that God wants to do that's going to help shift our community toward God more than ever is when you and I begin to understand that prayer is valuable to God. It is valuable to us. The most important thing you will do today is when you pray. The second thing that has lost its value is when we begin to look and, uh, and it begins to tell us that when God spoke to Peter and he sent him to Cornelius' house, he walks in, or excuse me, here's what was happening at Cornelius' house. Let me back up and catch this one. Number one is prayer. The second thing Cornelius did in verse 27 of chapter 10, he went, or excuse me, chapter, excuse me, verse 24, yeah. Let me just read it. And the morrow after they entered into Caesarea, Cornelius waited for them. This is when Peter was coming to his house. And, and Cornelius had called together his kinsmen, and his near friends. And later Peter said when he walked in, he saw all these people, they had assembled. They had come together. Here's what's important to God is that we assemble. I mentioned this earlier in one of the other uh, videos, but this is important to God. You know what's lost its value in America? The very religious Christianity freedom that our forefathers fought for, we give it up. We don't even go to church. All over the world, there's places where people can't even assemble, and we take it for granted, and we don't go there. This man of prayer, Cornelius, thought that something was getting ready to happen so much, and he had so much expectation, he called his friends and his family, and they filled that place. They filled that place. Now, what were they waiting for? They were waiting for Peter, who was the messenger. The, second, the third thing that has lost its value in our nation is the messenger. This is not to pat me on the back or other pastors, but there is a five-fold ministry that God has set in order. And those who respect that, that ministry, they are a blessed people. Those who take it for granted, they don't understand. Matter of fact, let me just show you something, and, and, and please hear my heart on this, that what's lost value is prayer. Secondly, church has lost its value. People use it so flippantly, and if you get up on Sunday mornings and ask yourself if you're going to church, I don't think you understand what church is. It is the body of Christ assembling together to honor King Jesus. But if you think it's about you, then you probably don't go much. But I just want to challenge you to get involved because God counts the church valuable. You know how I know that? Scripture tells us Jesus died 
for the church. He gave, he loved the church so much, it says in Ephesians 5, that he gave himself for it. He gave himself for it. So I believe God wants to restore value to prayer. I believe God wants to restore the assembly coming together. I believe God wants to restore the value of ministers. Ministers, pastors, teachers that are listening to me, what you do is very valuable. We have gotten stuck in a job that is disrespected. Everybody tries to tell us how to do it. There's no value in America for what you do. But I want to tell you, if you're in a five-fold ministry, God called you to that. You do it whether people accept you or not. But I want to call on people who don't understand it. And if you're not called to it, you need to show respect. Because Cornelius, when Peter walked in, fell down on his face. You shouldn't fall down. You don't worship man. But what happened, he was so excited that somebody had taken time to come tell him the message that was going to bring him closer to God, that he honored the man. I believe God wants to restore honor to the pulpit, and we want to bless you for that. Okay, you with me? Prayer, church, and messengers. But not only that, the message. Those people couldn't wait to hear what Peter was going to tell them. And he began to tell them, and here's what happened. This is what blesses me. He's telling them and preaching to them in verse 43 of chapter 10. He said, to him gave he all the prophets witness that through the name, whoever believed in him shall receive remission of sins. That was the end of his message. That's, that was the closing comments, not because he was done, but because God showed up. Let me tell you one other thing that God counts valuable. He counts prayer valuable. He counts church valuable. He counts his messengers valuable. Because if it wasn't messengers, you would not have a Bible. Every one of them was called to deliver a message. You need to respect ministers like you respect the Bible in the sense that these were men and women who God used and God is using people in our community to share the good news, encourage them. And also the message. The message is very important. People disrespect the message. You must cling to the message. I don't care how many times you've heard John 3, 16. It is the most valuable message you'll ever hear. And if your pastor uses it every week, you need to embrace that. But God loves people. Here's what I'm trying to say. God wants through us to restore value to people. People can get killed over a pair of tennis shoes. My own brother was murdered at a bar, and the guy used about 20 cents or 30 cents worth of 22 bullets and took my brother's life, and he counted my brother's life zero. But God wants to restore the value of human life in America, where they're aborting babies, millions, 50-something million people have been thrown into garbage cans. God wants to restore value back to the human life, and we're excited about that. And the last thing that I want to say is when Peter was preaching... And the, the, the value of the message was, Jesus, if you'll believe in him, he'll forgive you of your sins. When he said that, you know what happened? The Bible says that the Holy Spirit came into the room, came into the room. And there was a bunch of Jewish people there that did not know God was saved Gentiles. But they stood there and with their own eyes, because even when Peter was called, Peter said, I don't want to go. It's, they're common. They're unclean. What I'm saying, the basis of today's lesson is... You can't count common. Do not count common what God has cleansed. And what he had done, he showed Peter that there was great value in the Gentile people. And he sent the message to him. And you know what God did? The Holy Spirit filled the room. Holy Spirit filled the room. I believe that we need to understand God counts prayer valuable. God counts church valuable. God counts the messenger valuable. He counts the message valuable. And he counts people that hear the message valuable. But he counts Holy Spirit valuable to us. He, we need to not lock him in the back room. We need to allow Holy Spirit freedom in our services. And the very fact that you're born of the Spirit, you need, that needs to be valuable to us. So let us praise as we close this seventh video in this little short series. Father God, I pray for everyone that's listening to this. God, that you will quicken us, 
God, that we will not live a life of intoxication with the world in so much that we don't bother going to church, we don't bother praying, that people become a bother to us. God, that we begin to disrespect the messengers and the message. And Lord, God, help us if we ignore the power of your Holy Spirit. God, raise up people who embrace the power of your Holy Spirit. And God, I thank you for that. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless you. We love you. It's not a beat-up session at all, but we are in a world that's in trouble. Our nation needs some people to start counting valuable what God sees as valuable. I pray sometimes, God, I want to love what you love and hate what you hate. And if there will be people that will do that, we can see our nation turned around. And yes, we in this community can see God do exploits in our midst. God bless you. Thank you for joining us.